brand new boat, what are you going to do? I'm going to give you the four things to make sure that you do if you're lucky enough to be able to get a brand new bass boat. I'm going to tell you the four things that I do because being a bass professional angler, you have the good fortune, lucky, however you want to call it, to be able to get a new boat every year. So I've got a lot of experience. I've, uh, I think this is probably 18 or 19 uh, as far as new boats go for me. And I've kind of developed a bunch of different stuff that I do, but just real basic like, I'm gonna tell you four things to do, four tips to help you when you get this new boat. Now, number one, you gotta turn around and make sure you're covered in the back, for sure. Now this goes for new or even a pre-owned bo uh, boat that you are just getting for the first time. I can tell you, clean that boat and motor as clean as you can get it and put a good coat of wax on the engine. Now let's take a look at this one right here. All right, now what I did when I first got this, this motor is I had to drag it all the way from Arkansas is where they make these bass cats. I drug it all the way from Arkansas back here to Virginia. So there was a little road residue on the motor, cleaned that up with a glass cleaner and a microfiber towel, cleaned that up really, really well. And I cleaned the power poles really, really well. Uh, clean those up so it was looking new and shiny. Then I went and put a coat of this ceramic spray. It's like the newest version of wax. Now this is Mother's, it's just a reputable company. I don't know that it matters. What, what does matter is that you put a good coat of wax or a ceramic coating, whatever it is, put that on there while it is crystal clean. And it, like I said, if it's used boat, clean it as absolutely good as you can clean it. There's all kinds of tricks you can do to get those water spots off there if they've already been on there. Uh, but then once you get it clean, get all those water spots off, then you put a good, good coat of wax, maybe even two coats, uh, a good, good base of wax or uh, that ceramic coating. That way, when you go to the lake, you can wipe that motor off and it's, it's going to be clean just like this again. I mean, it's just going to be glossy black, going to be good looking and it's gonna last a long time, not gonna get those water spot, spots quite as easy. And then, depending on how much you fish, you're gonna to wanna to wax that, clean and wax that, that motor for sure, probably you know, once every few months. Uh, you know, go out a handful of trips, throw another coat of wax on there. With, this, with the waxes nowadays, now this comes with all the new bass cats. It's a Lucas Slick Mist detailing kit, it's very fancy. Now I cleaned my motor before I even found this in the rod locker, uh, so that's, uh, that's how that went. But, uh, but they got this, the, you know, the fast and easy speed wax. I'm sure that works just fine. The, the big deal is to put it on there and then make sure you don't forget about your power poles. Uh, this leading edge right here gets a lot of bugs over the course of uh, driving down the lake, driving down the road. Uh, if you can have a good coat of wax on there, you can just run a microfiber towel and it cleans really easily versus if you don't have anything on there. So uh, the boat, is also the same way, put a coat of wax on that boat. I haven't put a coat of wax on this one because we're gonna wrap it. Um, big missile baits wrap, kind of a Elite, Bassmaster Elite Series thing. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna wrap that. So I did not wax the, the actual hull yet. We'll do that later on. Uh, the wrap sticks better to it if you don't wax it before you put on there. That's number one. That's first and foremost. That's the foremost thing that I do. So number two about getting a new boat and then this sounds weird and something a lot of people don't think about, but number two is you need to check your nuts. Now I don't mean your nuts, I mean you, you need to check your nuts uh, because I would talk to, no, no matter who it is, I've been around you know, a lot of bass boats and nine out of 10 of them, and it just, this goes for any manufacturer, any manufacturer, when you get a new boat trailer, when you drive that for 50 to 100 miles, or more, 50 to 100 miles, you might need to tighten up all your lug nuts. Uh, so just you know, grab that three quarter inch uh, ratchet, hit it, hit it on there, hit it, make sure all of them, if you have a um, tandem axle, make sure you hit all your lug nuts on all four. If you have you know, single axle, make sure you hit all your lug nuts, make sure those wheels don't loosen up. Sometimes when they come from the factory, they, don't, they, don't, they, they loosen up a little bit right off the bat. Uh, I've seen that. The other deal is not only your, your lug nuts, but the nuts, all your nuts back in here, all your motor mounts, after you run for 20 hours or so, you wanna tighten up all of these connections 
where the you know, TH Atlas goes to your boat, where the TH Atlas goes to your motor, and then within the TH Atlas, you just want to snug and make sure after about 20 uh, or so hours, make sure everything is still nice, tight, and tugged. Just check your nuts, man. Check your nuts. You got to check them out. Uh, you can do the same thing with your trolling motor, that bracket that's mounted to your trolling motor. At the factory, it's going to come super tight, especially from Basscat. But over time, and that, that thing gets to bouncing, especially in that first 20, 30, 40 hours of running, those nuts are going to loosen up. So you need to pop that panel off up there and tighten those up. So number two, just check your nuts. All right, number three is electronics. You have the electronics here. I've got electronics there. I, I did all my own rigging. If for some reason you do your own rigging, this is a big tip for you. If you buy your boat and it's already pre-rigged, everything's already set up, then this really doesn't apply to you. But uh, if you're gonna do all your own boat rigging, I could tell you before you run all these wires, before you run your transducer wires, before you run your ethernet wires up to the front, before you run any of that kind of stuff, just soft connect everything outside of the boat. Connect your power here and connect your power up there. Connect all your transducer wires and ethernet. Turn all your units on and make sure you have all your connections done outside of the boat. Before you start snaking everything through, I'm telling you, it is way, way easier, especially if you've got multiple graphs on the, on the console or multiple graphs up front. It is a huge help. Connect them individually, turn them on, make sure they all work with the wires all outside of the boat. I did this already. Make sure that everything's connected properly, power it up, make sure they're talking to each other and all that before you go putting everything putting all the wires through there and then when you do put the wires through there just feed them one at a time uh, there's there's a couple different little tricks i'll show you one here in just a second um, but when you're connecting those pull those wires through one at a time don't try to pull the whole bundle through that is a pain you're going to ask for uh, problems and you don't want to kink any of those wires all right so here's the tip on running those wires, no matter if you've got a Bass Cat Ranger or whatever bass boat, uh, is you go down to your, your local hardware store and you can get you one of these fiberglass wire running kits. And this is a 3 16th size. So what that is, is they come in little segments like this and they wire together. So you can, you can grab these little segments and you, you can put two or three or four of them together in order to run those wires um, you know, through your boat. Now every boat is going to be laid out a little different, but I can tell you this is the deal. So you can screw these together and then you can do two or three, however many you need to go from the back to the front or from the console to the front, wherever you can run those through those little openings and this bad boy will just fish right through there. Then you can tape your wires to there and then pull them right back through. And the way to do that is that once you put these little brass connections on there, they will break. So if you, if you just take some duct tape or some electrical tape, and put it over top of that connection, it'll be a lot stronger. Uh, learn this the hard way. That little tip right there with the tape comes from my boy Andy Thomason, uh, fishing the bass open, so he, uh, he figured that out himself, and I appreciate that tip. But uh, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal, is getting these little fiberglass running kits if you're gonna be running your wires after you hook them up on the outside. That's number three. Got number four for you right here. Last but not least, don't forget your safety equipment. Most dealerships don't give you all of the safety equipment that you need with your brand new boat purchase. Yeah, you just spent a gazillion dollars, it seems like, on all the, <laughs> the brand new boat, all these electronics and all that kind of stuff. You need to make sure that you have the safety equipment that you need to pass a Coast Guard test. You're gonna get checked no matter where you go. You need to be Coast Guard approved. Number one, you gotta have a fire extinguisher anytime you have a gas engine and a floor in your boat, no matter this goes for like aluminum all the way up, you need to have a fire extinguisher. Uh, if you have a gas tank, gas engine, you need to have flares. You need to have flares. You need to have a sound device. You can have an air horn, like a little air horn like that. Sometimes a whistle, a whistle should suffice as well. You need to have a life jacket. You need to have one of these 
types of life jackets. Uh, if you have an inflatable life jacket, you need to have one of these in order to take that off. Uh, if you have that other, you know, like the suspenders type, if you have that kind of life jacket, you need to, and you want to take it off, you have got to have a regular foam, what is this, type four, type three PFD. Uh, you have the type three PFD, you want to have that. I just use the type three to begin with. I like the cushion, I like the security, and I know every single time this one is going to float. Got to have that, uh, and look, I have already have my kill switch connected. Uh, so get in a habit of using your kill switch. It is there for a reason. Then you got to have a throw cushion. Throw cushions are essential, but a throw cushion is not legal unless you have rope to attach to it. You're supposed to have rope of a certain length. And uh, as long as you have rope, that's the important part uh, because you can throw that throw cushion out to somebody who goes overboard. And if the rope is attached to the throw cushion, they can grab onto the throw cushion and then you can pull them in. That's the purpose of a throw cushion. Uh, so if you don't have the rope, you might as well not have a throw cushion. So that's, uh, you may, that's number four of things to do, mandatory things to do when you buy a new bass boat. Now it doesn't matter if it's a used or new one, I would do all four of those things uh, regardless if I got a new boat. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any other questions or any other tips, I wanna see that down there in the comments. So thank you for watching.